Hello, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday at 1 p.m. And you could also find me on the Conscious Resistance uh, YouTube channel and Conscious Re Resistance website. So today we have Benny Wills, who is the co-creator of Joy Camp uh, YouTube channel and is a truth-telling comedian. So, Benny, <laughs> so, so tell me how you got into all of this, um, you know, I guess, uh, you know, poking fun at current events with comedy. Sure. Uh, well, let's see. Um, starting at a very young age, I loved being a performer. I decided that's what I wanted to do with my life when I was four years old. I just loved uh, making people laugh and entertainment in general. And at a certain point in my development, I became very aware of, um, I guess, lies I was being told about uh, the world we're living in and about the, about history and then um, I don't know and then I struggled with it for a long time not knowing what to do because I wanted to participate in you know help in the awakening of the planet but activism didn't feel right for me uh, and meanwhile I was still studying to be a professional actor and then one day Kevin who's the other creator of Joy Camp with me we made a video called Conspiracy Theorist PSA which was making fun of the 1950s propaganda public service announcements. And we realized like immediately that that's what, was our, what our purpose was. We were blending our sense of humor with our ability to make films and perform, entertain with um, the knowledge that we had been accruing and understanding. And so we realized that the truth movement, quote unquote truth movement, whatever you want to call it, lacked a sense of humor big time. Um, and rightfully so, because it's really serious stuff, obviously, like dealing with, um, you know, a global conspiracy and debt based slavery. Like, that's not funny. But we, you know, Kevin and I were always able to laugh, like, as our way of release with each other. And we realized how significant that was and how this movement really needed some place. For people to go to, to not only let off steam, but also for people who are already awake to share with their friends who they had been having trouble communicating with, because when people are laughing, they're much uh, more willing to listen. So we realized how absolutely important what we could do, uh, what we were doing, could be. Uh, so that's what happened. <laughs> Long story short, we were, we just, it was just a marrying of all worlds, and it all synced up at the right time. So, so. Who are your uh, your influences like along like was there any books that you read or like any comedians or any any personalities that really influenced you to Yeah, man, that's this? a good question. Great question and I never I, I never get all the one I never get all my influences one answer because uh, <laughs> there's so many. But of course George Carlin and Bill Hicks were huge for me and for Kevin. Um and then growing up, I mean I love I grew up with the Simpsons. Simpsons were a huge influence on our sense of humor, both of us. And then um, sketch comedy, like Monty Python and Kids in the Hall and groups like that, as well as um, the playwrights that I, I mean, I was just, I'm a student of the theater. Like, I studied theater for 10 years and did 55 plays in a row before I started to be a wow. truth comedian, so to speak. So people like Shakespeare, huge influence on me and just the, you know, the, the levels that he was able to um, reach and like the layered, man, this brilliant writing. As well as my personal favorite, Samuel Beckett, playwright, huge influence on me, nihilist, you know. But his thing, his theme was always at the end of the day, like, what else do you have but laughter? And that was a huge influence on me. Um, so, yeah, those are my primary influences. Awesome. Yeah. And I also noticed, I think, on the Joy Camp um, About section, you guys have the quote by Oscar Wilde. Oh, right. Right? That's if you, want to, if you want to tell people the truth, make them laugh. Otherwise, they'll kill you. Yeah. yeah. I I tell that to everybody I meet, and which yeah. is one of the reasons why, you know, in my in my articles I'm always posting political cartoons, and in my in my even in my video podcast where I'm just talking, I'm I'm trying to make it as humorous as possible, because yeah, you're right. These are dark and gloomy topics that can get easily depressed depressing for people, and what's the use of that? Like if we're just depressing people. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of productive, right? Exactly. And people who aren't who aren't willing to listen to this information or listen to the counter uh, point of view, 
they won't, no matter how, you, how loud you yell, they're not going to listen. But when you make them laugh, they're, they're, all their defenses go down. Their walls are immediately broken, and they are more receptive to the information. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's, yeah. that's one thing I realized when I, um, I studied comedy. Um, like, I, did a, I did, took a comedy class with my, my brother, um, like, uh, what was that, four years ago. And <clears throat> I think it was like an eight-week comedy class. And it was wonderful. You know, I learned it's amazing how powerful comedy can be when you're talking to complete strangers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that they, they can trust you if you can make them laugh, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have absolutely. their trust. <laughs> well, we, we had... Um... Oh gosh, I, sh I should really memorize this one. This one comment we had once because it was it, it sums up what we do so well. A woman commented once on a video. Finally, I can finally something I can post on my Facebook wall without being attacked by my friends, and that about sums up everything that we are striving to achieve with Joy Camp and what we're already achieving. I mean, that's that's the goal. Something that people we can so we can bridge the gap between people who don't want to listen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's so difficult. It's difficult that it, as it is to talk to people about this stuff, you know. So if you can edge in there some jokes every once in a while, yeah, it definitely makes the. I think I think there's a proverb that says if you're gonna if you're gonna send an arrow through the heart, make sure you tip it with honey first. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right? That's good. Well, yeah, and there's also an, there's also an element of finesse. I mean, because when I was going through my like massive download of information awakening. I was not knowing how to communicate with people and because it felt so important to me. I was going, I was so passionate in the conversations I was getting into and I was getting into a lot of arguments and I couldn't believe that people didn't want to hear what I had to say. So I had to like rethink and reevaluate how to communicate. Um, people, for whatever reason, don't like being taught anything by another individual. They don't want, they, it's an ego thing, like people don't want you to replace the information that they hold sacred. They want to feel like they do, they're doing it on their own. So what we try to do with Joy Camp also is not get preachy. We don't want to tell you like, hey, this is, our, this is how we feel about this issue. We're just showing you that it's an issue. Mm -hmm. So that hopefully the person who's receiving the information, who's watching the video and laughing, will take it and laugh and then look it up on their own. So if we make a video about chemtrails, for instance, where we're just calling attention to chemtrails. We're not saying necessarily that... This is, you know, that they are what they are. This one horrible bad thing. We're just presenting the issue so that they hopefully will do their own research and come up with their own conclusions. Yeah. So, you, so you're basically providing the impetus for a person to go out and investigate themselves, right? Right. Exactly. We're giving it to them on a platter, saying other people aren't going to want to touch this subject, but we're touching it, and we want you to know about it, and now come up with your own, you know, idea and opinion and conclusion or whatever about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well said. I mean, uh, yeah, a lot of these topics can be taboo. Like you can see that when when you approach, you know, the, I think uh, my wife always yells at me whenever we have a, a, a you know dinner with family. She says two things you don't talk about dinner: politics, religion. <laughs> right. Right. The two things that you probably need to talk about the most. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Because because everybody gets so incensed and angry when you talk about those things, but perhaps that anger is as a result of ignorance. You know, they really don't understand what's going on, and so they just get angry. You know, it's the Muslims. The Muslims are they're the ones that are taking away our freedom. You know, it's the uh, it's, it's, it, 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 it's the Mexicans, the Mexican immigrants are coming in here stealing our jobs. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, it's actually the power structure <laughs> telling you to hate your neighbors. Teaching us to be afraid of each other. Yeah, they're yeah, the ones. Yeah. We're we're all getting screwed by the same master. Yeah, yeah. So so um, I mean, the way the way I approach these conversations um, is, I don't really tell people. Like I remember you said uh, you don't like labels, right? So yeah. So you know, I I would consider myself an anarchist voluntarist or an anarcho capitalist or anything like that. But when you say those things. Um, for most people, it doesn't mean anything except the word anarchist. That can provoke a lot of emotional baggage <laughs> coming out of people. So usually yeah. the way I broach these topics is I talk about economics because that is something that most people can relate to, right? It's right. like if you're a business owner, you know, um, you're going to be affected by certain laws and regulations, right? You're going to be affected by the increase in the money supply, right? So what is the Federal Reserve? What is its function, right? How many people know what the Federal Reserve is, right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's the approach that I take it. 
you know, and Absolutely. and and if you get if you can come at it from comedy, even better. Yeah, and I mean, in my, for, I mean, first of all, I I think that my day to day interactions, my one on one encounters, are just as significant in you know healing the planet as my videos are. I mean, if I'm not if I'm not walking my own talk, so to speak, then I'm not really helping anything. And when it comes to that, like I don't really necessarily use comedy. I just use kindness and. I ask questions and I find that itch in a person because everybody has an itch. Everybody feels like they're getting screwed by the system in some way. So my goal is in a kind way and in a lighthearted and sometimes funny, I suppose, charming way, get them to understand that that itch is connected to a much larger overall problem. Mm. You know, every, 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 little, every, every little thing that's screwing an individual is connected to a larger problem, right? Because the system itself is flawed. And that's, to me, just as significant. That art of communication is just as important as, you know, the videos that I make. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, I, I realized, like, um, I, I was thinking about, you know, if let's say there was some kind of economic collapse, right, and the power structure just falls and, and you know, chaos for a short moment, what's going to happen, you know? And I, and I think about what skills do I have that are valuable in a society? Mm. Like, do I have valuable skills to offer people, right? Because apparently, because I guess if you're working for the IRS, you can't, you don't really say you have valuable skills to offer yeah, people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I think being able to make people laugh is a timeless skill. You know, everybody, you know, people always want to laugh, right? They always want, you know, there's never going to be a time where people are not going to want to laugh, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. People, yeah. people well, flood into, you know, comedy clubs Friday night, Saturday night after a week of hard week of work, you know, and, and it's just, it's just great atmosphere because people come together and with just, they just want to laugh. That's it. <laughs> it's very simple, you know? And yeah, they want to relax, have a good time and feel like they're a part of a larger group. It's also... You know, with a common with a common goal to have fun and yeah, share, share like you said, laughter and you know that's and that 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 sort of pursuit is the only pursuit really that's like I don't know that's what we all want that's what everybody wants money is just something they've told us we want but what we really want is just to feel good and have fun and you know connect with other people and to laugh and to love and to be listened to and be touched and all that like that's what's important in life you know not not who has the most money so who can buy and own the most stuff like that's what we've been taught but you know that won't fill the void in your soul no matter how much you acquire no matter how much how much stuff you buy cars you drive mm -hmm. you know you still gonna want to be loved you know yeah politics to me is um, is the art of dividing people you know okay. based on fear right fear. Sweet fear of your neighbor like you're you know be afraid of the rich people be afraid of the poor people be afraid of the black people white people right. you know it's yeah. always some other group of people that we should fear right. th that are causing all the problems right yeah divide and conquer absolutely you know and and so and w w when you're focusing on other people it's easy to become distracted at you know the root cause because right th those are they're considered the branches right as uh, yeah. Henry David Thoreau, he said, you know, for a thousand people hacking at the branches, there's one hacking at the root. <laughs> and, the, and, and the root is what needs to be hacked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And, yeah. and what's crazy is that those people who call attention to the root problem are usually, you know, um, ostracized or vilified by their peers <laughs> for doing so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Even if you're, what is that quote? Even if you're a minority of one, the truth is still the truth. Gandhi, yeah. Yeah, and there's also that other one, uh, the three phases of truth. Yeah, yeah, I think that's also Gandhi. Or, or, or Schopenhauer. Yeah, first. Yeah, Schopenhauer, that's what it is. All truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, is it is violently opposed. And third, is it, it is accepted as self-evident. I mean, that's, that's exactly what it is. There's resistance at first, but then people will come along. They will get it. Yeah, yeah, it's hard yeah. To be like, oh, their their BS, their belief systems. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny about societal change is that it doesn't even take like a large majority of the population to critically think and analyze this stuff for there to be massive change, right? Because it's always a small percentage of people, ten percent, maybe max twenty percent, of really passionate um, thinkers that are willing to you know sacrifice stuff to change the course of human history. And then everyone else 
who doesn't really want to think about this stuff just goes along for the ride, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's like a trend. I mean, first of all, I think that people, majority of people are good people. They're good. Whether or not they're awake or not, they're still decent, good people. They want the same things that everybody wants. They want to feel happy and secure and happy and loved and all these things we just talked about. Um, evil is an anomaly, but people are just misled. People are right now stuck in a rhythm, a routine of following these rules that are basically being given to us by evil forces. All they need is to, be, to have their, sh their focus shift from that to good leadership or you know, something along those lines, the good energy, let's say, and everyone, then the paradigm shifts. They don't need to necessarily wake up. They just need to, you know, look from, they're looking left right now, they need to look right. And then everything changes, like the wind, mm. like the wind changing direction. Yeah. I really feel that. You yeah, know? I fundamentally believe also that people are, uh, you know, good natured. You know, when people go out to vote, they're, they're voting because they want people to be good, right? When, you, when they pass, when they vote to pass a law or regulation, they want people, want companies to act in a good way. You know, you know who, who actually votes for a legislation that produces more, you know, um, oil destruction in the Amazon rainforest? <laughs> Nobody, right? So right. we all have this desire to improve the world. The problem is, you know, what do you do? What methods do you use to... Um, after that, you know, to try to to try to implement that, right? And, and if you're using government, the most you know aggressive, powerful, violent institution <laughs> that exists right. on the planet. Yeah, right. O obviously, we have to stop asking for change from within because you just it's not going to happen. I mean, this is a, it's a it's a structure that's built on corruption. You can't. It's inherently bad. You cannot get that to change. You know, it has to start from without outside of that. Yeah, the, the, um, there's a quote that I like, which is um, um, sending in a good man to reform the state is like sending in a virgin to reform a, the whorehouse. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I think that was my, and I, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what kind of audience you have, and I may, I don't know if people, take this how you will, but like that was, the, that was my, my whole problem with that Occupy movement a few years ago, is while people's hearts were in the right places, right? But they were sitting there, they were occupying space, asking for the people who, and who, who, who make the rules and force the rules to change the rules. So they're saying, we are upset, we are pissed off, but we want you to fix it for us. <laughs> you who's already screwing us. <laughs> that kind of movement's dead in the water because people are they're basically, they, they don't want to take the actual responsibility of saying, you know what, you're out now. You're out as leader. We, you have failed us. You were supposed to be a public servant and you were failing us, so you're out. But instead they're saying, hey, you're fucking us over. I'm sorry, I don't know if, you, if I can That's say right. that. No screwing us over. <laughs> you're screwing us. But can you now change that? Can you just be a nice person now? And that, that doesn't change anything. You know, like I said, the, the system is corrupt. It must come from the people. The change must come from the people. But, but then there's those people who say, we are the government, you know? We elect these people, right? So they're representing us, so they are us, right? So therefore, by that logic, the, the Jews that were, that were killed in the Holocaust committed suicide, right? Because they are the government, <clears throat> right? <laughs> I don't think I'm a minor on that. If you, if you, follow, if you follow that logic to, to its conclusion, you know, if there is no separation between us and government, then whatever government does has been sanctioned by the people, right? If a police officer beats a person senseless for holding a leaf, um, you know, then that we consented to that because... We are government. <laughs> mm. If the banks bail out, you know, the uh, if the government bails out the banks, you know, trillions of dollars uh, with stolen taxpayer money, we did that, <laughs> right? It wasn't the it wasn't the bureaucrats, it wasn't the politicians. We did that, <laughs> which is com fundamentally flawed. You know, we did not right. do that. Of course, we did not do that. Like we pressed a button and voted for a guy to go in there, and after he went in, there is absolutely no accountability after that. We have no, right. we have no say in the laws of regulations, right? right? Yeah, I mean the, the the fine apathy, right? I mean, I when I because I, I don't vote, and whenever the, whenever I go to the grocery store or something during voting season, and they're trying to get me to register, and I say I don't vote, I get I get met with such like <laughs> offended uh, responses, and they're like, "Oh, well, how's apathy working out for you?" <laughs> I'm like, "You, you calling me apathetic." Because you're deciding to vote one day out of the year. You're putting one day out of 365 days to say, I'm going to make a difference today. 
But change has to come every day. You know, you have to be working towards something. And you're calling me apathetic? Me who's actually trying to make a difference, but yet, because I'm not voting in this corrupt system, somehow I'm apathetic, you know? <laughs> it's like it's, it's like, crazy. Uh, it's, crazy. Like, it's like if you're playing somebody in Monopoly, right? And, and they're, uh, you know, printing their own money constantly. Everyone else can't, right? One person can print their own money. Would you continue to play with them? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great point. That's actually that's a great point. You know, that's, that's the system we're living in, right? How can you how can you possibly compete with an entity that can just you know print up billions of dollars at will and yep. and obtain the value from that money by stealing it from those people that already possess you know other currency? <laughs> right. How do yeah. you compete with that? <laughs> It's just madness. Yeah, exactly. It's a great point. It's just madness. They're creating. Yeah, there's no. There's no such thing as money. It's just numbers on a screen. It's just. It's not even real anymore. Yeah, the, the Federal Reserve is how I actually got into all this stuff. I started researching about that and precious metals, and uh, you know, learning about the economy that way and the history of the Federal Reserve, how it got started, and everything. And it's mm -hmm. really fascinating, you know, because. When you really study the Federal Reserve, it's uh, it's kind of chilling, <laughs> to, to say the least. Yeah. <coughs> like um, you know, the, just just think about it. the Federal Reserve was created to protect the value of the currency, right? And so from 1913 until today, currency has been destroyed. The value of it has been destroyed at least 98 percent, right? So how how well is it doing <laughs> protecting the, the value of the currency? I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's so and it's so inherently corrupt at every level, and it's so obvious. That's that's what's something that I'm, I always struggle with is how obvious it all is. And once you get to a certain point, you know, I, I feel like I'm I'm like Neo in the Matrix. You know, like I just I just see it now. I just see the tactics and I see the game being played. And to me, it's so not only is it obvious, it's like insultingly obvious. It's like they know I know. It's like they know I can see it, but yet everybody else. There's like no in between. It's like you either see it or you don't. You know, there's like no middle ground. Mm -hmm. That's like, if I could capture that in a video, that would be amazing because that's something that baffles me. Like that, just that difference. You either see it or you don't see it. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, when people start learning about this stuff, there there's so so first it's like you're shocked, right, at what you just found out, and then you're kind of fearful that you know what is this huge overarching government that can that can um you know create any law at will can create any amount of money at will and can violate anybody's civil liberties at will you know <laughs> confiscate anybody's home anybody's savings at will um that's what we have to live under and and so you know it's understandable for people to be fearful and you know fear the apocalypse you know economic collapse and when everything gets destroyed what are we going to do we're going to just everything's going to descend to chaos it's going to be mayhem and everything and it's just easy to be fearful. So, and I think the next step after that is, you you come out of that, and you realize that no, you know, it doesn't have to be like that, right? You know, people are still good, even though if there's no government, people are still going to trade, people are still going to raise their kids, and still going to, you know, <laughs> go on with their lives. <laughs> right, life will go on. It it just means that there's not going to be a leech on our backs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're gonna have to take some self responsibility. Like, you're not gonna be able to just go to the grocery store and take, you know, and take uh, food for granted. You're gonna have to realize that food comes from a source, and it has to do with cycles. And you know, you can't just. That's why that's people are afraid of the apocalypse, is because they don't know how to live. We're so detached from nature and reality. Like mm -hmm. everything works in cycles, mm -hmm. and we are so removed from that. We're afraid of what it would be like to not have this system that provides these things for us. You know. And the other thing that my, my wife was fearful when I was studying this stuff and telling her, first thing she said was, um, don't write about it, don't talk about it, um, don't post videos about it because the government is going gonna, is, is gonna to watch you and track you down and, you know, nasty things are going to happen to us. And she's like, you know, she, Monica's like, we have kids, you know, we have our family members, you can't jeopardize us, don't, don't talk about this stuff online. <laughs> so did you go through a similar fear like that? Or you yeah, afraid to speak out? Every time, every time I have a fear like that, I think, okay, I'm, I've been programmed to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Like a fear, fear is what we're supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. And I have to like check myself every time I have that fear of something, okay, this fear is a mine. Like this is, this is what I'm supposed to feel, to be afraid of the system. But I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, like this, this awakening or whatever you want to call it is happening at the, at the same rate 
as sort of like the um, the madness on the other side. Like it's like a race to the finish. Like this is unstoppable at this point. This is why someone like um, David Cameron is speaking in front of the United Nations saying conspiracy theorists need to be dealt with as harshly as ISIS. Like that's a terrifying thing for him to say, yeah. but that just shows how afraid they are of us. Mm -hmm. This is this is unstoppable at this point. We are like a, a, it's like a mudslide or a, an avalanche. It's just built. It's just gaining momentum as it goes down. And you know, if we if we if we decide to be afraid now, then we're letting them win, and we have to just stay diligent. I mean, I've. But to answer your question, yes, I have been afraid before. I mean, as times we re release a video or something, and we're like, wow, we're really whew, we're going there. But then at the end of the day, it's also like, hey, it's also just a funny video, and it's. It is what it is, and it's important. I mean, I'd rather live my life with integrity, you know, than than to say I was too afraid to say anything. So I, I, I feel like it's. I want to look back on my life and say I did the best I possibly could with the time that I had and the resources available. And I just remind myself of that whenever I get afraid because fear is the enemy. Yeah, yeah, and I also think about you know my kids, and if I were to not speak out and self censor. What kind of lesson am I teaching them? What kind of message am I sending, right? <laughs> to be afraid of those who, right. who have the guns, right? Those in authority. Be afraid of those people that can hurt you. <laughs> and, I mean, one of, the, one, thing, one of the next big steps is somehow reaching the ones who hold the guns for the criminals. I mean, the police and the, and the soldiers, they're the ones who would actually carry out this sort of brutality. And they're in our boat, you know? They're in the 99%. They're just... The front, but they're in our boat. If we can reach them, game over. Like everything changes. If they realize, if they remember that they're people and they're in debt, just like everybody else, and they're paying their taxes and they're getting screwed by the man, like everybody else, and they take, they stop thinking with the uniform that they're wearing, then we win. I mean, period. Like we win. So, I don't know. I I trust. I I, I live in life with a lot of trust. Trust in myself and trust of my. You know, I, I really am actively trying to put, you know, think from my heart rather than from my brain, right? And I feel like you can't necessarily go wrong when you're in that boat. And if somehow the government wants to take me out, that would be really unfortunate for me and for a lot of people. But I don't think that way. I mean, I can't. I can't. I just can't allow that thought to be in, in my consciousness because I feel like I'm doing, I'm doing the right thing. And that's that. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I mean, there's a uh, Larkin Rose. I don't know if you follow any of his stuff. Uh, I like Larkin Rose. Yeah, he makes some awesome videos, and you know, one of his um, one of my favorite lines of his is, you know, I'm not afraid of the Maos of the Stalins or the Hitlers, right? Because they, they directly, they don't kill many people, right? It's only the the order followers, right? The people that work under them, do their bidding, and respect them as authority or near godlike deity status, yeah, and kill millions of people in the name of government right those are the people committing the true atrocities that we read about in the history books those right. are the people that are misguided <laughs> that think that they're they're defending freedom or you know spreading democracy or <laughs> you know? yeah and granted like everything i just said i mean it's no simple task obviously like getting no. through them and then I mean, you can see it playing out it's almost like a script being written right and like, you have these things like Ferguson or the Trayvon Martin case, the media really, really pumps life into these stories to really make it seem like it's all racism, mm. like it's a white cop versus a black guy. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I mean, it's, a poli it's the police state versus the people. Mm -hmm. but they're wanting us to think it's racism so that we end up getting really mad at the cops. But the cops are just carrying out their orders. So they're just distancing, they're just furthering the gap between the cops and the people. So that's trip very challenging, but that's you can see their intention when they do stuff like that. You can see them trying to make. So then the cops are on the defensive, right? The cops are more afraid of the people. The people are more afraid of the cops, more angry at the cops. So we have to. I don't know. You know, I don't really know how to solve that problem, but it is very important to deal with the police with love and be gentle and not call them the enemies because they're just like you said, carrying out their orders. Yeah, yeah, the the uh, <clears throat> the phrase or the sentence "just doing my job" is one of the most dangerous <laughs> phrases <laughs> in the history of the world. You know how many atrocities has been committed with the excuse of just doing my job, <laughs> all right? <laughs> right, and this police state is so scary. I mean, they 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 want us to be so afraid of you know Islamic 
extremists and terrorism and Muslims in general. Meanwhile, you're about, mm, what, a thousand times more likely to get killed by a police officer in your neighborhood than you are by a terrorist. I mean, let's, can you, give me a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, a Muslim like an ocean away, um, you know, with sandals is supposed to be more frightening than a police officer here that, you know, can disarm you at will, can club you, can tase you, can cage you, can, you know, can even confiscate your property, you know, enter your property without your, you know, consent and... Uh, I don't know if you heard about civil asset forfeiture, but that's another really nasty uh, method of confiscation of, uh, of, of um, you know, home or of cars. Just that's that, and that's related to the war on drugs, right? Just with any suspicion of drug-related activities or possession, you know, the police can come and basically evict the people from their home. It doesn't matter if they, you know, paid off their mortgage after decades of hard work, right? They just evict the people, and all of a sudden. <clears throat> You're fighting to keep your house that you paid off. <laughs> yeah, the game is rigged. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's um, you're right. You know, it's it's not it's not an easy task for us, and uh, and I think that that's that's one of the beautiful things about what we are trying to do is that you know it's it's something that's so difficult, which is one of the reasons why so few people venture down this path, and uh, you know, like you know, all the people that have died. You know, pursuing like I see, there's a, a picture of John Lennon. Is, it, is that John Lennon back there? Oh yeah, John yeah, Lennon. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Some of the people yeah. that have died, yes. died like just promoting peace. You know, in the world, like how revolutionary is that? Peace and love, right? <laughs> right. He had he had influence, and yeah. they took him out. You know, I mean, I mean, it's scary, but uh, but then again, I'm not really afraid because you know I, I consider myself a small time person. Like, why would they target me? And you know, if if the government the, the government doesn't really have resources to target all the people that are, you know, trying to be truth-telling or activists, you know. So they, I, I, the way I look at it, they target the high profile. Like, like you know, there's many people that don't pay their taxes, but, they, but not all of them get, you know, um, jailed or caged, right? But Wesley Snipes did, right? And he's yeah. a big name. So, and so when you tell people about taxation is theft and that we should, you know, why are we paying that, right? And they say, well, you're going to go to jail. But <laughs> look at Wesley Snipes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but but they just don't have the resources that's the thing that's the thing people realize it's it, it's you know the government is largely a, it's a hologram it's an illusion yep you know it's like the the wizard of oz right behind his uh his pyrotechnics is just an old man pushing levers and pushing buttons <laughs> exactly what it is it's yep. just, just twisted old men so um and i mean look at them i mean they're they're not happy people like these these old crusty bankers and whatnot i mean they they look like they're dying from the inside out. Like their skin is hanging off their bones. They look like miserable cretins. Like they are not happy. It doesn't matter how much wealth they're sitting on or how much they've obtained or how much they're screwing the people. Like they're wearing it in the way they look. Like they are not happy. They are evil. Evil 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 beings, psychopaths if you will. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, you know, to to think that people that, you know, the government will willingly um limit itself and you think that's that's one of the delusions that a lot of minarchists have is that you know we're just going to vote we're just going to vote for the government to <laughs> to vote itself into oblivion you know into irrelevancy mm. <laughs> I don't know what that means how would that how would that happen you know you think the government would provide resources to delete itself of course not <laughs> why would it do that right. you know historically every government expands 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 and you know, robs the people of their of their wealth and of their productivity until the people can support it no longer, and and they just you know refuse to fund it, refuse to participate, and and that's it. The game is over, like you said, right? Over. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I just um, I'm really I, I'm I'm optimistic. You know, I I went through my phase of pessimism and dark darkness and. And now I'm, I remain optimistic, you know. I just try to talk to people, as many people as I can when I meet them on the street, you know. Uh, yeah. although, although I don't call myself, like, like I said, I don't call myself labels and anarchists or anything, but I, uh, I definitely try to spark up conversation and get people to think, ask questions, you know. Because, Absolutely, yeah. You know, you, you want people to go home and you, like, plant the seed in their mind, right? And hopefully they're going to um, take that as going to become something significant in their mind, you know. Oh, that's the hope. Yeah, that, that's what you and that's what you guys are trying to do with your with your videos, right? 
plant the seed. Yeah, yeah, we're trying. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, we're just trying to serve it up on a platter. We're not trying to tell you how to think. We're just calling attention to something that people are afraid to call attention to, and present it in a way that's digestible and can offer an opening for someone to do their own research and come up with their own conclusions. Awesome. So, um, all right. So, I don't want to take up any of your time, any more of your time. So, uh, why don't you uh, let people know how they can reach you, your work, how they, sure. how they can reach you? Yeah, yeah. Um, our channel is on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash thejoycamp. Our website is www.thejoycamp.com. And you can like us on Facebook. We post rather regularly. And we have a Twitter um, at thejoycamp. And you can also get in touch with me. I mean, our email address, we respond to every personal email we get, or we try to anyway, at the or thejoycamp at gmail.com. And you can talk to me on Facebook. I'm easily easy to reach. I'm a nice guy, you know. Don't be shy. <laughs> single, huh? single white male, right? <laughs> oh, I, I'm, a, I'm single, you know. <laughs> nice. Straight, but I'm single. Um, if you haven't watched our videos yet, please, I, I implore you to watch our videos. And, you know... Oh, you can also donate to our cause, which is very important because we are doing everything on a shoestring budget. So if you want to throw a couple, if you like what we do and you want to throw a couple dollars our way, every dollar we get goes towards production, uh, not in our pockets. Um, and if you like our videos, please share them. That's the most important thing. Share them with your friends. If you like them, that's one thing, but like them and pass them on. I mean, that's what we're doing it for. We're doing it to spread the word. We don't want to just be the outlet for people who are already awake to have a laugh and then go back to their lives. We want people to use these videos to bridge the gap with those who are not awake yet. So please share the videos. You'll see you'll see people responding, I promise. Awesome. Do you guys accept Bitcoin? You know, we don't yet. And after going to this anarchist festival in Acapulco, I think it's time we looked into it because there seems to be a real big movement in that direction and we would be wise to get on the bandwagon. Oh, oh, t- not yet. The yeah, answer's not yet, but yes, soon. Tell me about an- Anarchapulco. I, uh, I'm curious to hear about it. Uh, it was a blast. Uh, it was incredible, actually. I mean, I, I unfortunately got food poisoning for a couple of days, so I was out oh, of commission man. two days every week. But that aside, that sucked. I, it was great. Um, I mean, I got to hang out with like Luke Rudowski, who is a friend of mine, so seeing him was great. I collaborated in a couple of videos with him and Dan Dix of Press for Change. And um, was it Press for Change? Press for Truth. Press for Truth, yeah. And James Corbett of the Corbett Report. Um, and then a lot of really good people, and it was actually really validating to have so many people come up to me who were familiar with Joy Camp and thank me for the work because it's you know sometimes you don't feel like anybody's seeing it because I'm just sitting here in LA in my apartment and putting videos out there and not knowing who's who they're reaching. So to see firsthand that people are really being affected by it in, in a positive way and responding to it was uh, significant and it gave me a lot of fuel to keep going. Um, so all in all, it was just a great experience. I'm very grateful to the people who enabled my trip because I didn't, I mean, I didn't pay for it. So people, people who thought I should be there brought me out there, which I'm, I mean, I have so much gratitude for. And it was just a, it was a great week with a lot of really great people from all over the world. And we collaborated on a video. I, I produced a video out there that I think is going to be possibly our most um, profound uh, video to date. Uh, we produ- I produced something out there that I'm so proud of and I, I used a lot of particip- a lot of people were involved, maybe like 40 people or so were interested in being involved with it and I just think it's going to be amazing. So I'll let you know when that comes out, uh, hopefully within the next month or so. But yeah, all in all, great experience. Um, I'm, they said they're going to do it again and I'd love to go back. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Just to go back to your point, positive feedback from from listeners is really a great encouragement for continuing work, you know, that, that we do, right? Because yeah, you're right. You don't know who's listening or who's reading, you know, the blogs or the articles, right? And to hear people say, you know, I read your stuff, I really liked it. <laughs> yeah, it's very validating because you know, going 
being one of the awake ones, I mean, not to sound like an elitist or anything, but it can be lonely sometimes because you feel like you're just surrounded by people who don't get it. So to be in an environment where everybody gets it and everybody also appreciates the work that you've been putting out there for three years, it's, uh, it's a very gratifying and humbling also feeling. I mean, it's a really, it's beautiful. And I'm very, I'm so happy that I went. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So, um, so can you, can you give a small uh, message to the, my listeners? Like before we sign off, um, any, uh, anything that comes to mind that you would like them to hear? Sure. Well, I, I did a speech in or at Anarchapulco uh, that I called You Are the Cure. And that was the theme of my speech. And, it, and like I was saying before, the change starts with you. That's my message. The change starts with you. Be mindful of your decisions and be kind to the people you meet because we're all in this together. And we must heal ourselves. If you want to heal the world, you have to heal yourself. So every time you, you reach for a Big Mac and you have that little voice in your head that's like, ah, screw it, that's the system winning. You should remember that. So be mindful. Be strong. Have willpower. Get that system out of your system. You are the cure. Yeah. We need a, uh, a philosophical detox, right? <laughs> we need a lot of detox. Yeah. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're infected with this. It's a, it's, it, it runs deep. I mean, it's a really complex intricate system that's been affecting us from day one in our lives and our parents' lives from day one. So it's very, it's thorough. So just stay diligent, stay active, don't give up and just keep healing yourself, healing your body as within, so without, you know, if you want to change the world, you must be willing to change yourself. That's awesome. what I message the people. Well said. <clears throat> yeah. I tell people, you know, right after you, right after we finish uh, 12 years of uh, indoctrination in the public schools, you know, that's when the the, uh, the the process starts of ex ex expelling the statist excrement, intellectual excrement from our brains. Right. Resi the residue. Of <laughs> so, and also, I think Voltaire said it said it well when he said, uh, "If you want to change the world, first tend to your own garden." Right? Absolutely, exactly. <laughs> it and starts. It always starts with the individual, right? Exactly. Always. Yep. <laughs> well, awesome. and do something, and then do something with the information. You know, do if you think. If you think that you, you're funny and you could be funnier than us, by all means, do it. Like, do it. Just do something. Do it. Put. Put. Do. Do something. Uh -huh. That's my other advice. Do something. Yeah, that's the beauty of the internet, right? Anybody can be, um, you know, can can put their content out there for people to see, right? Yep. And uh, and I wonder how much how much longer that ability is going to stay now that there's net neutrality passed, right? We're going to get it. It'll stay. Yeah, no, we're going to keep going. They can't shut us down at this yeah, point. Yeah, there's, I mean, I'm... It's too strong. I'm hoping that these, uh, you know, unelected uh, old men, you know, who just passed this these ridiculous legislation, which I think harbors back, you know, it, it goes back to like 1934 Telecommunications Act. They're like linking the internet with the telephone. <laughs> So it's completely outdated, but but yeah, mm. <laughs> awesome, Benny. Thank you very much for the conversation. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate Pleasure. it. So yeah. um, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network uh, and the Conscious Resistance YouTube channel. Wishing all of you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.
español, inglés, deutsch. Normalmente produzco solo videos en inglés y español. Normally I produce only videos in English and Spanish. Normalerweise produziere ich nur videos in English and Spanish. Pero hoy voy a hacer otra excepción y traducirlo también en alemán. But today I make another exception and translate it into German too. Aber heute werde ich nochmal eine Ausnahme machen und es auch in Deutsch übersetzen. Ya algunas semanas tengo escrito en mi lista de tareas por hacer de traducir el video hashtag BTC4. Now already some weeks ago I have written on my to-do list to translate the video BTC4, hashtag BTC4. Schon seit ein paar Wochen habe ich äh, auf meiner To-Do-Liste geschrieben, ähm, den Video BTC4 in Deutsch zu übersetzen. Estoy segura que esta idea puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente. I'm sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten äh, finanziell helfen kann. Y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin. And give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und motivation geben, um über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im moment ist der Preis von Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015 would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my for the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanos Enigma, explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanos Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die idea besteht hauptsächlich en folgenden, folgendem. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. 
Bitcoin-Adressen in Papier ausdrucken, ähm, wenn ich mal 10 oder besser gleich 100, y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero, And the next time uh, you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas. And for your friends, of course. Und für deine Freunde natürlich. O tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante. Or maybe a tip in a restaurant. Oder trinkgeld im restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin. De direcciones de Bitcoin. When you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die, uh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüsseln, um, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015, escribir la fecha más plus cuatro años, uh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin eh, en estos cuatro años, yo lo vuelvo a tener. Tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in, this, um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, schau, das ist der private Schlüssel. Um, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Schlüssel. Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma, das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin.
This way, you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. In mi video antigo. English, Espanol. Video mix number 25, video mix numero 25. This time I want to talk especially about hashtag JCCVW, which I created some time ago, abbreviation for Justice Court Comedy and Virtual Worlds. Esta vez quiero hablar especialmente sobre el tema hashtag JCCVW que el hashtag que he creado hace algún tiempo so, que, eh, y es la abreviación por eh, justicia, Justice Court Comedy in Virtual Worlds, eh, justicia, comedia de justicia en mundos virtuales. I made already several videos about this hashtag. Uh, ya he hecho varios videos sobre este hashtag. But this time, especially thinking of my last video, number 24, uh, Robot Ethics. Pero esta vez, especialmente pensando en mi último video, eh, video mix número 24, Robot Ethics, e Ética de Robots. First, I want to mention uh, the episode of Simpsons, Treehouse of Horror, number 13. Primero quiero men mencionar el, el episodio. El episodio de Simpsons número 13, Tree House of Horror, número 13. Just a side note, it's uh, astonishing uh, now many years in Spanish TV uh, and at lunchtime and in the evening they are still showing about half an hour or more. Uh, Simpsons, many years now. Uh, es asombroso. Um, ya muchos años que por el mediodía y también por la, por la noche enseñan por lo menos media hora de los Simpsons en la televisión española. Did you hear of the term Simpsonology? Has oído de, del término Simpsonología o Simpson? Simpson, Simpsonology, Simpson, Simpsonology. Maybe I'll check out if it in Spanish. Simpsonología. Todavía. Long story short, the moral of the this episode of the Simpsons: the animals have more ethics than humans. Resumiendo este episodio de los Simpsons. Uh, los animales tienen más ética que los humanos. Remember my last video number, video mix number 24, Robot Ethics, Cat Ethics. Recuerda mi uh, último video mix número 24. Robot Ethics, Ética de Robots and Cat Ethics, Ética de Gatos. And with a funny GIF, GIF is abbreviation for Graphic Interchange Format. Y con un gracioso GIF, GIF.
maybe it's a little bit help, helpful to compare robot ethics and cat ethics. Tal vez eh, ayuda a comparar un poco el ética de robots y ética de gatos. Once I said to my mom, uh, talking with this person is like uh, teaching, teaching ethics to cats. Una vez he dicho a mi madre, mira, hablando con esa persona es como uh, enseñar ética a, a gatos. They just do what they want. Solo simp simplemente hacen lo que quieren. And the robots do what they are programmed to do. Y los robots hacen simplemente lo que están programados de hacer. The question is the responsibility. La cuestión es la responsabilidad. So in the end, you see, it's almost most not controllable. Así que verás que al final no es controlable. But normal cats can never turn as evil as humans. Pero gatos normales nunca pueden volverse tan eh, malos, hacer cosas tan malas como los humanos. Perversion, perversión, opposite land, el país de justo todo al revés, copyright, copy prohibition, el copyright es más bien no un derecho de copiar sino una prohibición de copia, copiar. Law of intellectual property. La ley de la propiedad intelectual. Especially because I like to produce video mix, I got very angry about the legal system and the perverse law of intellectual property which inhibits innovation and freedom of expression. Especialmente porque me gusta producir video mix, uh, me enfadé con el sistema legal, en especialmente, el, especialmente la ley de la propiedad intelectual que inhibe la innovación y la libertad de expresión. And if you continue to think about the legal system, uh, you get more and more doubts. Y si continuas de pensar sobre el sistema legal, vas a tener más y más dudas. But still, you have, I think it's important to have a place to talk about ethics. Pero igualmente pienso que es importante de tener un lugar donde se hable sobre ética. That's the main motivation why I created hashtag JCCVW, Justice Card Comedy and Virtual Worlds. Es la motivación principal por la que creado el hashtag JCCVW, Just, Justice Court, Comedy in Virtual Worlds, Justicia, Comedia de Justicia en Mundos Virtuales. Even on my main Twitter account, Planos Enigma, the cover picture, uh, I've got written Justice, who has the right to judge? Who is without sin cast the first stone? Hasta en mi cuenta de Twitter principal, Vanos Enigma, tengo um, a cover, um, la imagen de cover, escrito justicia. ¿Quién tiene el derecho de juzgar? 
quien esté sin pecado que tire la primera piedra. And it's astonishing how often the Simpsons show some kind of court comedies. Y es asombroso cuántas veces en los Simpsons enseñan algún tipo de comedias de juicios. I want to remember especially the lawsuit or court comedy of Homer Simpson when he sold his soul to the devil, Ned Flanders. Especialmente quiero recordar el juicio de Homer Simpson cuando vendió su alma al diablo, uh, Ned Flanders. In normal legal system, the question is always, is it legal or is it illegal? En el sistema legal, eh, normalmente la, la pregunta es, ¿es legal o es ilegal? But it's more important to ask, is it, is it ethical, is it right or is it wrong? Es más importante preguntar es está bien o mal es ético o es, no no es ético. Did you hear of the term jury nullification? Has oído de este término ahora no sé en español pero eh, uno tiene el derecho de decir que por ejemplo no culpable porque la ley es injusta. You have the right to say it's uh, not guilty because the law is not just unjust. I want to remember especially the case of Ross Albrecht, Free Ross, hashtag Free Ross, Dread Pirate, Silk Road. Especialmente quiero recordar el juicio de Ross Albrecht, um, Silk Road, Bitcoin, and my profile picture of Innocent Crypto Kitty, y mi imagen de perfil Innocent Crypto Kitty, que quiere decir uh, uh, gatito inocente de criptografía. But it's medical catnip. Pero es catnip médico. 30 years of jail for running a website which other people used for buying and selling catnip. 30 años de cárcel por hacer una página web que otras personas han usado para comprar y vender catnip. And I want to remember what uh, said Roger Ware, uh, Bitcoin Jesus. He said something like, uh, the war against drugs cause more harm than the drugs themselves. Y quiero recordar lo que dijo Roger Ware que es como el Bitcoin, el Jesús de Bitcoin, dijo algo como que la guerra contra las drogas causan más daño que las drogas mismas. Okay, let's go back to even if you would have want to have a person like ah and not just Roger Ware uh, the case of Charlie Shrin, another Bitcoiner, a very interesting case too, and one interview. Um, I made a video, um, very interesting comment of Andreas Antonopoulos in one episode of Let's Talk Bitcoin. I think it's the video mix number. 
Yes, I had just a look at video mix number 17. Uh, posto e mirado es el video mix numero 17 uh, con Charlie Shrim. Uh, this comment I like too much, so I will paste it. Just paste it here. Este comentario me gusta demasiado, así que uh, algunos minutos voy a pegar en este momento. Podcast can agree to the fact that whatever we have in this country that passes for a justice system has at least three tiers. There are, you know, people at the top who get infinite, infinite forgiveness for some of the most disgusting mega crimes and never face the tiniest consequence for their actions. You can put a million people out of their homes with fraudulent foreclosures. And you'll never see the inside of a courtroom. You can rig markets, steal money from investors, defraud millions of people, you'll never see the inside of a courtroom. And yet, there's the other side of the scale where you have a situation of zero tolerance, where the slightest infraction, selling a loose cigarette for 30 cents, gets you a street side arrest judgment and execution by strangulation where jaywalking gets you shot by a cop, even if you're unarmed, and where cities run effectively debtors' prisons where they rotate people through there for traffic fines and keep accumulating them until they end up in jail for violating subpoenas and things like that, and run it as a for-profit enterprise. And then in the middle is the middle class, caught in this justice system, this thin layer that's getting thinner all the time because they're getting squeezed from the bottom. And the middle class sees the top of this country getting away with uh, mega crimes and sees a wave of zero tolerance coming at them that used to only affect minorities, but now is increasingly taking bites out of the middle class. And they're struggling desperately not to fall into this Orwellian zero tolerance justice system. That's not justice. I think everyone on this call probably has a similar perspective to this, but effectively what we're talking about is an erosion of the rule of law. And the most fundamental concept of the rule of law is equality in judgment. If a law exists, there is one tier. Everybody faces the same consequences for breaking that law. And that fundamental social compact has been violated. And for some stratum of the society, it never really existed. You know, some people were always going to feel the heavy boot of law um, with no recourse and um, suffered under that for 200 years. Uh, but now that is increasingly becoming the vast majority of the population. So you live in a society where the slightest mistake is very harshly punished. That's if you survive the police encounter. Um, while you watch a country's so-called elite just roll from scandal to scandal, from crime to crime, with no one going to jail. War crimes, no jail time. Bank fraud, no jail time. All of these things, you know, surveillance and violating the constitutional rights of millions of people, not even a misdemeanor issue. It just gets legalized after the fact. Lying to Congress, no problem. And then Preet can promote his resume by going after Charlie. It's really a disgusting situation, but I think it's, it's a situation that has nothing to do with Bitcoin per se. It's just a universal collapse of justice and the rule of law in this country, one of the few countries that actually had it. As that was so well said, I have no response to it. I, I completely agree with Andreas, everything he just said. It's 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 not limited to, to Bitcoin. It's a, it's an overall you see it you see it with everything. I mean look at the case of Aaron Schwartz. May he rest in peace, but once they have their sights on you, telling it's you per se, I think it's what you represent 
or who you are, um, there's no getting out of those sites. And the higher up you are, the harder it is for them to prosecute you. It just doesn't make sense for them. Our justice system has been corrupted or viewed to, to, to what it is today. And I created the hashtag Let's Talk Justice, or maybe a better hashtag Let's Talk Ethics. Y también he creado ese hashtag Vamos a hablar sobre justicia, Let's Talk Justice, pero tal vez mejor Let's Talk Ethics. Vamos a hablar sobre ética. After this part of video mix number 17, I will paste a short video comparison of the two uh, websites of Wikipedia about this episode of Simpson Treehouse of Horror number 13. Y después de esa parte de video mix número 17 voy a pegar un pequeño video en una comparación entre las dos páginas de Wikipedia en inglés, en español. I forgot to say in English. In comparison between English and Spanish of the episode of the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror, eh, perdón, español ahora, eh, comparación del episodio de Simpson Treehouse of Horror número 13. Comparing hashtag JCCVW to uh, the real legal system, of course, there is no such thing like judgment, rather a fiction punishment. Comparando JCCVW, comparándolo con el sistema legal, por supuesto no hay tal cosa como un una sentencia de juicio más bien un, un castigo ficticio. Just want to remember you, I have that uh, Twitter account Soul Trade Game in virtual worlds like Second Life with, with Virtual Guide Dog. Uh, recordar que tengo la cuenta en Twitter que se llama Soul Trade Game traducido juego de negocios de almas es como un juego en mundos virtuales como Second Life especially interesting for cats and blind people especialmente interesante para gatos y personas que estén ciegos o tengan problemas con los ojos o people blind or people who have problems with the eyes. Cause the bra anyway, watch my videos about Soul Trade Game. De toda forma mirad mis videos sobre Soul Trade Game, juego de negocio de almas. And I have that Twitter account, Soul, uh, sorry, Soul Confiscator Catch. Y tengo este, esta cuenta de Twitter, Soul Confiscator Cat. You are welcome on all of my Twitter accounts. Normally I follow back.
Eh, estáis bienvenidos en todas mis cuentas de Twitter. Normalmente sigo de vuelta. So you see I have a double or triple interest to open hashtag JCCVW. Así que veis que tengo un doble o triple interés de abrir el hashtag JCCVW Justice Club Comedy in Virtual Worlds. Uh, what I wanted to say before about the jury nullification. Uh, if you really would like to to um, participate in a trial lawsuit uh, to help uh, somebody from getting declared guilty fast. You have to take vacation, you have to buy a flight to New York. And I think this trial was in January of um, Free Ross, Ross Albrecht, um, Silk Road. So, bueno, lo que iba a decir antes uh, con respecto al derecho de Renalification uh, en español no me acuerdo, how was on, no estoy segura, pero que tienes el derecho de decir que mira, yo estoy, uh, no estoy de acuerdo que esta persona sea declarada culpable. Oh, así que primero tendrías que tomar vacaciones, comprar un vuelo a Nueva York y eh, era ese juicio me parece era en, en enero cuando hizo un montón de frío. So comparing this legal system with uh, hashtag JCCVW, this is in, in, in virtual worlds. Everybody can participate and talk about ethics, right or wrong don't need to buy a flight to New York uh, comparando ahí con el sistema legal no eso tiene que tiene lugar en mundos virtuales no hay que comprar un vuelo a Nueva York y tanto tanto esfuerzo para participar en un juicio discutir sobre ética Puedes fácilmente participar de cualquier lugar, ordenador, P2P, and especially talking about robot ethics, this will be very important in the future. Y especialmente el tema de ética de robots en el futuro será muy importante. Because it's easy to say that the person who programmed the robot is responsible for the actions, but uh, it's very easy to uh, to hide the identity who programmed the robot. Es muy fácil decir que la persona que ha programado el robot es responsable por las acciones del robot, pero es muy fácil de ocultar la identidad de la persona que ha programado el robot. So now I